Okay, so 100% of you out there that are studying any sort of algebra course, whether that be pre-algebra, Algebra 1, uh, Algebra 2, Elementary Algebra, Introductory Algebra, College Algebra, all of you are going to need to really have a good, firm grasp of what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now, this is basic algebra concepts. Hopefully, most of you uh, know what I'm going to be uh, discussing or already have mastered this. And the topic of this video is going to be like terms okay like terms you can see here i have some terms and i'm going to kind of just uh, review with you what a term is in algebra and how we um, identify like terms and then what we do with like terms so if you're a little confused on that i'm going to clear all this up in just one second but first let me quickly introduce myself my name is john i'm the founder of tc math academy i'm also a middle and high school math teacher i've been teaching math for decades and i'm telling you right now there is no such thing as a bad math student so if you're failing in mathematics it doesn't have to be that way Okay, so in order to do well in math, it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to do the work. Okay, even those students that are really good in math, have a natural aptitude for it, still have to work hard. So you got to work hard at learning math. The second thing you need is great math instruction, clear and understandable, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. It will really, really help you out. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with the math section, things like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, I have a large library of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have excellent middle and high school math courses for homeschoolers. You might want to check that out. And if this video helps you out, consider helping me out by liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel. But with that being said, let's get into terms and like terms. These are kind of the, like the DNA, the building blocks of algebra. So you absolutely need to understand everything about this. And let's get into it now. All right. So what we're looking at right here uh, is what we could classify as terms in algebra. Okay. Now, these particular terms, also we can uh, describe them as polynomials or monomials. So if you've heard of that word, monomials, monomials. Okay, this is a single term polynomial. Okay, so a lot of language, a lot of um, terms and definitions you have to understand uh, in algebra. But what we're going to be talking about here in a second is something called like terms. Okay, you got to know how to deal with like terms. But let's talk about the parts of a term. Okay, so again, each one of these is a, a particular term. And let's take this one right here. Okay. All right, so first of all, in, when we're talking about a term, okay, and again, we could describe this as a monomial, the basic parts of what's going on is a variable, okay, so in this case, we have a variable y, then we'll have a number in front of that variable, okay? Now, by the way, this variable can have a particular power to it, so here we have y squared. Uh, let's contrast that to this one, this is y to the what? You might be saying, well, there's no power here. Well, when you just have a variable like this, there's always uh, at least a one. So this is y to the first power. So that's what that is right there. But we never typically write that that way. So this is a variable, okay, right here. It could be y, could be x, could be anything. So don't get um, stuck on, oh, it has to be a y or a z. No, it could be any variable. All right, so again, we're talking about what makes up a term in algebra. So you're going to have a variable, and then you're going to have some sort of number in front of that variable. That number could be any real number. Okay, so here I have a 3, but it could be uh, just as well 1 half y squared. It could be negative 1.7 y squared. Doesn't make a difference as long as it's a real number. Any number that on a number line, you're okay. Okay. Now, this number in front of a variable is called a coefficient. Okay. A coefficient, you need to understand that. Uh, let me attempt to spell it C O E F I C I E N T, I believe is the correct spelling. Listen, you come to my YouTube channel for math help. Definitely don't come <laughs> to my channel for grammar or spelling help. I will definitely uh, mislead you because I am uh, not good in those categories, hence why I am a math teacher. All right, so anyways, coefficient, I do believe I spelled it correctly, coefficient, uh, but that's what this number is described as, okay? So we have a coefficient, the number in front of this variable. So let's take a look at uh, this one right here, okay? 
So what is the variable? Well, clearly it is y, okay? The power is, or the exponent is three. Okay, that's the, it's y cubed. And what's the coefficient? Uh, negative two, okay? So uh, all of these here are various terms, okay? So this is a term, again, uh, the terms that we are looking at are uh, uh, polynomials, okay, which is a huge topic in algebra. And specifically, we could classify these uh, polynomials as monomials, i.e. single, um, just single term polynomials. So I'm kind of like expanding a little bit here on what you're going to be learning. But again, we're just focusing in on terms because uh, you are going to be asked to do something or to identify like terms. And then we're going to talk about what we do with like terms here in just a second. All right, so now let's talk about like terms. So we talked about all these right here being terms, but what makes a term um, uh, alike? Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, or I'm going to highlight uh, terms here. Out of all these right here, these two terms are like terms, okay? So why do you think they are alike? All right, now it should be kind of obvious. Matter of fact, put your answer into the comment section if you can kind of give me a, a definition of like terms in your own words. But what makes two terms uh, like terms is that their variable and power to that variable is exactly the same. So here we have 3y squared and here we have 5y squared. Each of these terms must have y squared, okay? So for example, 3y squared and 5y, okay, would not be like terms. You might be saying, well, they both have a y. Okay, well, no, uh, that's not good enough. Okay, they must have a y squared. So you must have the exact same variable. Okay, it can't be y and this can't be x. They must be y, it must be uh, to the same power. Okay, so again, you're looking for things with the exact same uh, variable the exact same letter or symbol to the exact same power. So these two terms are like terms. So knowing that, what are the terms are like? Well, 3y and 5y, they both have exactly a y to the first. And then over here we have negative 2y cubed. Uh, there is no other term with a y cubed. So this term is all by itself. Okay, so that's what a like term is. Now, what can you do with like terms? Well, what you can do with like terms is combine them. So how does that work? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at a problem. Let's uh, use this 3y squared. Now, let's say we wanted to combine it or add this with 5y squared, okay? So in algebra, you often have uh, like terms, things like this. And what you can do, again, is combine them. So what does that mean? Well, you, we can add them up. If I have three y squares over here and I have five y squares over here, how many total y squares? Well, all you need to do is add the coefficients. So in this case, we would have eight y squared. Okay, so if you have three y squared plus five y squared, we can add these up because these are like terms and you get eight y squared. So let's uh, take another situation. What if I had three y squared plus negative 10? y squared. Okay, what would be the answer there? Well, we would still just add the coefficients. So negative 10 and 3 is what? Hopefully you're up to speed on your positive and negative numbers. That would be negative 7y squared. Okay, that's the answer. Again, what we're doing here is combining like terms, and we're, um, uh, the way we're doing it is first identifying uh, which terms are like, and then we're going to go ahead and add the coefficients of those respective like terms. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this little final practice problem. So if you think you could do this, go ahead and pause the video and add up any like terms uh, if you see any. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this now. So the way you do this, you just kind of scour through and identify things that have the same variable and power. So here I have a 6m. I'm looking with any anything else with a m to the first power. So I'm like, oh, okay, here is an m to the first power, and I'm looking, I don't see any more. So a good way of doing this is just kind of scanning, okay, like this. Matter of fact, I'll do it this way because you don't have a highlighter. Uh, you can, you know, um, underline stylistically things like this, 
as you get um, as you practice combining like terms. So I have a 6m and a negative 1m. Okay, so now I can combine these like terms. So I'm going to be thinking, all right, 6 plus negative 1 is what? These are the coefficients, 6 and negative 1. This negative m, there's really a, a negative 1 there. So that would be, of course, uh, 5. Okay, so if you didn't see that, kind of wanted to spell that out for you. So we would have 5m. Now, when you're working with a, a string of terms like this, a good thing to do once you're done combining uh, your like terms is just kind of uh, draw one line, not a bunch of not, not Don't do this because you need to be able to see what's going on. Just draw one nice, neat line through the terms that you combined. Okay, so we have 5m. All right, so... Uh, let's go ahead and continue to look for uh, the next uh, power. Okay, I kind of like to go from left to right. So now I'm thinking to myself, I got an m squared. Do I have any more m squared? All right, I'm not worried about that number just yet. I'm just looking for m squared, m cubed. Nope. Oh, I got another m squared right there. So you might want to use um, uh, like two lines. Okay. After a while, you won't need to do any of this stuff, put lines in there. But as you learn this, just try to, you know, do something that would identify that. So now I have negative 8 plus 2. Okay, these are the coefficients. Negative 8 plus 2, hopefully you know that as negative 6. So it would be negative 6m squared. Okay, negative 6m squared. And then once we're done combining those like terms, let's go ahead and put a nice one single line, again, to those terms. And I'm looking through, and I'm like, oh, the only thing I have left is this uh, positive uh, 3m cubed. So we'll just kind of attack that on at the end, positive 3m cubed. So this is a uh, three-term polynomial. We would call this a trinomial. And one of the things that you typically do is write uh, your final answers in something called standard form. That's highest to lowest power. So this is the highest power, this is the second highest power, and this is the least highest power. So it's pretty typical to write these final answers in, uh, again, standard form. So 3m cubed minus 6m squared plus 5m is even a, uh, kind of the best way, a best format to leave your final answer in. But if you gave me this answer and you were in my math class, I would go ahead and give you a nice little happy face a check mark and an A plus. Matter of fact, I might give you a few stars just so you can feel extra special for um, you know doing a nice job on that particular question. But here's the deal, okay? Uh, terms like terms, all these basic polynomials are really they are the DNA building blocks of algebra. You absolutely really need to have a strong, firm grasp on how to combine like terms. And again, uh, these coefficients can be nice integer values like this. They could be fractions. They could be decimals. So, you know, uh, you want to uh, continue to practice this. All right, so this is kind of easy stuff, easy problems that I'm kind of laying this out for you. So the key to really mastering math is practice, okay? Practicing a lot and practicing things in the right way. So if you need additional help, with algebra, a couple of recommendations. One, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel playlist. Or the second thing is you might want to check out any one of my algebra courses, pre-algebra, algebra one. I have tons of them, algebra two, uh, intermediate algebra, college algebra, whatever the case might be. Matter of fact, some of you, if you're in pre-calculus, I have a pre-calculus course as well. Whatever the case is, um, you can find it in my math help program. Uh, by the way, too, again, don't forget I do have uh, math notes uh, you'll find those in the description of this video as well. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.